Good morning and welcome to Life Spring on this beautiful Easter day. So we thank you for taking time out to be a part of the family today, for worshiping with us on this beautiful Easter Sunday. So as you worship with us today, like us, share the page, share, share the video down at the bottom. Leave us some comments so we know you're here and that you're worshiping with us. And we just really appreciate you being part of the Life Spring family. We love you, you. We miss you. How many of y'all are ready to truly worship with our praise team today as we bring the presence of God into your home?
Sunday. Never would have dreamed we'd be here on a Resurrection Sunday and I'm in an empty building speaking to you, coming live into your home, but I, I thank God at least for the ability to come into your home this morning. And uh, as we talked Wednesday, if you miss Wednesday, you go online and find it. Uh, being thankful for, for the little things. Thankful that, you know what, we do have technology, that we can stay in touch with one another and and you know what? God works through the power of, of technology that he's able to come into your home. I ask right now, right where you're sitting, I know praise and worship was moving today. And, and I got to say thank you to Julie for that song. She preached my message. She doesn't even know it. Um, but that was an, a, a powerful and amazing song to, to set the scene today for Resurrection Sunday. I, right now, if you got somebody in the house with you, I want you to look at you, whoever's with you and say, he's still alive. Because you know what? He's still alive. Amen? I know a lot of critics try to one undermine, is God really real? Is he true? Where's he at in the middle of all this coronavirus? And you know what is amazing? When he was hanging on the cross, they said the same thing. Where is your God? And if you are the Messiah, come down off of that cross and save yourself. Guess what? Uh, he's still alive. He's still in the resurrection business today. Amen. Well, I just want to welcome you in today and say thank you for coming. Thank you for, for watching and, and being part of what Life Spring is doing right now with the help of God and and the move of God, I know some of you, I miss, man, I miss my people so bad. I just wish there was a way I could just hug every one of you right now, right through that lens. I wish I could just come through there and give you just a big old hug and uh, a mark hug, amen? And um, I also want to thank you for all of those that have helped make these services week in and week out happen. It takes a lot behind the scenes that go on to, to make this, these videos come, come to your home there's more than just standing in front of a, a telephone or a video camera or, or whatever. I mean, it takes time and it takes people's effort, plus trying to do your, your distancing, trying to stay away from each other and, and try not to infect nobody or get in. Because I know you're doing your part, right? 
I know you're doing your part. Your part is to, when you know, when you've done all you know to do, now then, therefore, stand. Stand on the word of God. But first do your part. We got to stay out of uh, mingling with a lot of people. Uh, you know, they put a lot of things in place that that's for our protection. And the sooner we do that, the sooner we can get back together. And I also would like to take just a moment to say thank you for your financial support of the ministry. I know I've had some people text me and call me and pastor, I, you know, I don't do online givings and I don't, you know, normally I, I put my offering in the plate. Uh, listen, guys, you can come by the church. You can put it under the door at the church. It's fine. It'd be safe. Somebody's in and out enough that we would get that. And again, thank you for all of you that are supporting the ministry and helping us in this time. And I also want to pray for those that are right now, you know, affected financially from the coronavirus. That, that you know what? With a devil meant for destruction, God will get his glory. So right now, before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to pray with each one of us to get our heart prepared because I have a timely message for you today. If you come to hear to, today with an ear to hear spiritually, God's got a word for you. Father God, we come before you today and I thank you for the work that you're doing in America. I thank you that people's hearts are being turned back to you. And that right now, fathers, we're in this, in being confined in our homes, that, that this is an opportunity for us to, to love on one another. Today, I ask for an anointing of truth of your word today. That every ear hear and let every heart be receptive. God, we know that your son died in our stead. That he bore our sins upon his back. And that, Father, right now that, that we have that hope of eternity in heaven with you. Now let your anointing flow into every house. And let your spirit just flood their rooms. Father, I ask as we come into the living rooms, cars, or wherever we may be coming into right now. Some may be in their bedroom, locked out, locked away so they can hear this message today. Fill that bedroom and let it just seep under the doors into their homes. Let there be an anointing of restoration. And I give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Now go and high five your neighbors. Tell them God is in the house. Amen. We're going to take our, our text today from John 20. He was with us last week. We started John 20, and we're going to go back to John 20 today. Talked about home invasion last week, and I pray that the Spirit of God uh, invaded your home and that you allowed him to invade your life and invade the, the dead situations in your life. Well, today we're going to start with John 20, verse 10, and it said this, uh, Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. Some of us got to get to our own homes. I mean, they, they went to their own homes because, see, Jesus had, had, had been crucified. But Mary, somebody said, but Mary. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had, past tense, had slain that he had why because he wasn't there no more amen then they said to her woman why are you weeping she said to them because they have taken away my lord and i do not know where they have laid him now when she had said this she turned around and saw jesus standing there and did not know that it was jesus how many Know that sometimes Jesus shows up. You don't even recognize it's Jesus. Jesus himself showed up to Mary. She didn't even recognize who he was. Sometimes he's working in your situation. He showed up a long time ago in your situation. And, and you don't even recognize that he's there. Some of us, you know, you hear people, where's God in all this with the coronavirus? He's right in the middle of it. I said he's right in the middle of it. Go on and, go on and accept that today. In verse 15, he said, Jesus said to her, woman... Why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Now watch this. This is an amazing part here. She said, uh, she supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Now Jesus speaks. Jesus said to her, 
Mary. I don't know, something about the way he said it, you can only imagine. You know, when somebody calls your name, you recognize their voice. I hear it all the time. Uh, Pastor, you got a uh, recognizable voice. I can recognize your voice in a crowd. I, you, you know, and I'm going to be honest with you. If, when you follow Christ long enough, his voice will be recognizable. Mary, he said, and she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which means teacher. And it's amazing me. She, now she turned and she realizes that he was in there. I believe that today you're going to realize he's in your situation. You know, skeptics like to say he's not even real. That it's a, a mythical story and, you know, it's a great thing to gather people and give them hope for, for Easter. This is what Revelation 118 says. Jesus himself in these words, he said, I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death, uh, hell and the grave. I don't know about you, and I think most normal people love a great comeback story. I mean, there's something about a comeback story that just awakens the spirit and the soul of each and every one of us. Some of you right now on the other end of this lens right now, you're a comeback story. I can stand before you today and tell you I'm a comeback story. Uh, a good comeback story is, is awesome. You know, when somebody's counted out and, and discredited and discarded and, and you know what, they're never going to be nothing. They're never going to amount to nothing. They're, that's their lot, lot in life and it seems like everything's happening to them. And, and, and there's just something amazing about a comeback story. It just, it is amazing. We live in, in a time right now, a great comeback story is what America needs today. What they need today is a comeback story that's going to change. Because you know why? We're hungering for hope. We need hope. Somebody say we need hope. Our people today in America, we hunger for hope. We've lost our hope in America. And, and I'm not going to say that everybody in America is hopeless. But what I am saying as a, as a, a, as a people, a American people, we've lost hope. Can I tell you something? Hope is what we, how we view something. Listen, mm, I'm going to talk in, in just a minute about uh in, in the sports arena, we, we see a lot of comebacks in the sports arena. Tiger Woods, there's a good one right there. Tiger Woods, probably one of the greatest golfers in our time. He, he comes in and as most of you know, he, he hurt his back, he's out. And he, you know, he's winning masters after masters after masters. And then all of a sudden, everything for him just went to pot. I mean, his, his marriage, oh, his family, his children, everything had went, his back had went out, and and now he couldn't, I mean, he had to have shots just to get up and go to a dinner because his back was giving him so much problem. Well, last year, he come back to win the Masters again. That was the greatest comeback story in golf. Amen? Um, Sports Illustrated in 2001 did an article on comeback stories. And they started out with uh, one of them, uh, and, and I know some of you might not even know who I'm talking about, but in, in 1968, Elvis Presley had his greatest comeback when they thought his career was pretty much ended and over. When he came back, and some of you didn't know that, go, go, go check it out. And uh, he, he come back with a TV special, which put him, put him up over the edge and, and sent him maybe that much greater to being called the king of music, amen? And then Muhammad, Muhammad Ali, after seven years of forced retirement, come back to win the championship. Muhammad Ali, you don't know who that is? That's back when boxing was boxing. You know, with Howard Cosell and, and when boxing was actually free to watch. <laughs> now, hello. But he came back to win the championship uh, because he was a comeback. He was a fighter. And everybody said, Michael Jordan, after returning, playing baseball, he comes back and ended up winning three NBA championships. Amen? 
But watch this. This is the amazing part here. And, and now we're talking about Sports Illustrated, a, a, a secular magazine now. Wrote in that article, but the greatest comeback ever happened in 33 AD. And it was the comeback of Jesus. When Jesus got up out of that tomb, not only did he get out of that tomb, he lived again to never die. That's the greatest comeback. See, I mean, it was a miracle that he, that he actually rose from the dead. But what's amazing is that he rose from the dead to never die again. So that's an ongoing comeback story that we will never lose. Everybody said amen. But you know what uh, amazes me is, is the critics of this day, they, they don't mind you talking about God. But it's Jesus that they have a problem with. They hate it when we call him the king of kings and the king of the Jews. And they, they hate it when we call him our Messiah, our Savior, our Redeemer. And see, they have a problem when we're washed in his blood, that we were bought by his blood. And, and so many times they say, oh, that's just an awesome story, Pastor. I mean, come on. Jesus? Man, where is there any proof of that? I don't know about you, but if you're watching right now, I, I can give you all the proof that you need. Jesus is still alive. He showed up in my house at 6008 Little Road when I was on my knees in withdrawals of meth. When I said, God, if you're real, I need you to show up. He showed up. And then some of you right now are some of the greatest comeback stories that I know. There's some of you today that you need to come back, and he's willing to meet you in that comeback. There's some power in that comeback. He's waiting on you right now, right where you're sitting, to be willing to receive your comeback. See, some of you right now, you're dead in, the, in, in, the, in life, and there's no hope. When Jesus said, I am the hope, I am the truth, and I am the life. Mm. The word of God is forever. He says that he changes not. That he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Remember when Jesus walks up to the tomb of Lazarus? The Bible says that. Matter of fact, he said he stunk. That he'd been dead for three days. And he, was, he stunk. And you know, he called him forth. How many of you know that? He said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus rose from the dead and he came forth. Remember when Jesus went to the, the little girl's house that was dead and he laid his hands on her and she came back to life? We've seen people resuscitated. I remember a day I get a phone call that a, a, grand, a mother that was panicking because her daughter just died during surgery and she refused to let her child die and praise her. We saw her resurrected back from the dead. We've seen those things. We've seen them shock people and they'll come back to life. We've seen people resuscitated. We've seen people that, but watch, at the end, Lazarus still tasted death. At the end, the little girl still tasted death. But Jesus was raised from the dead. Then he'll never taste death again. Now Jesus, amen. I, I just got to say this. Jesus is, probably, Jesus is the most important person in the world. I know, I mean, you, you know somebody that close to you. They think they are. You know what's even funnier than that? They think you are. But Jesus is the most important baby person in the world. Amen? See, Jesus changed the course of humanity. Jesus did more than just die so we can have our salvation. He, he did more than that. He changed the destiny of all humanity. The fall at the garden brought a Messiah a savior. And if it wasn't for Jesus, and I'm going to get there in a minute, if it wasn't for Jesus, we would not know grace today. And everybody said, see, the critics try to discredit the story and the life of Jesus. They try to discredit the, 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 the fact that 
or they may claim him as a prophet. But the Son of God, they have a problem with. Let me explain something to you. See, Jesus, I mean, they even went as far as to make up a story that the disciples stole the body of Jesus. I don't know about you, but there were 16 battle-ready, battle-geared soldiers guarding the tomb. You're going to tell me, I mean, just going to tell me now, that 16 of strong men, all 16 of them slept while 11 men come in and take the body of our Savior. Well, if they did, all they say is they said, uh, pretty sorry soldiers. They didn't do their job at all. But what's amazing is the one that saw he was gone was Mary. If they were going to come up with a, and devise a story, watch, I'm going to discredit them now. If they were going to devise a story that the disciples stole the body, they wouldn't have used Mary as a witness. Because see, in the first century, a woman cannot testify in court. So if she was the one to see and it was on her testimony and her testimony alone, they would have never used her in, in that setting because she could not testify. See, it's all crazy. You need to look at your neighbor and say, Jesus is alive. Amen. See, it's crazy that it was her testimony that they were hinging their story on. That was discredited from the beginning. Because why? This is not today. This is not your Santa Claus theology. This is not your bunny rabbit, Easter bunny theology. This is not your tooth fairy theology. Jesus is alive and he died for all mankind. And let me explain something better than that. He went to the cross and back for you and for me. He went uh, to the grave and back for you and me. He went to hell and back for you and me. He went so that we could have grace today. Amen. You mean he went to the cross? Let's talk about him going to the cross. See, he, the Bible says that he was beaten unrecognizable. See, he gave up his life. They didn't take it. He gave it up as a ransom. And when he penned the words, it is finished. Can I tell you something? He didn't tap out, baby. No. He didn't say, I'm through. I lost. What he was saying is, I, it is finished. I got victory in my hands. And up out of here, I got to go. I need to get to that borrowed tomb. Let's talk about the tomb in a minute. Because, see, he borrowed the tomb from Joseph. Joseph... Long in his tomb. Don't you know that all the other people saying, Joseph, are you kidding me right now? There's some things you don't loan out. Can I borrow your casket? What? How can you borrow somebody's casket? That's like asking to borrow somebody's toothbrush. That's straight nasty. You can't borrow him. Why? They gave him, loaned him his tomb because he knew it was only temporary. And I can only hear Joseph going, it's just a weekend thing, y'all. Don't worry about it. Don't get all excited. It's just a weekend thing. It's, it's just the way it is. I mean, I needed it. He needed it. I loaned it to him. I mean, I can't help it, but he needed it. He is my Savior. I loaned it to him. Good. Can I tell you something? How many times have you been to the graveyard and uh, around the world? And, and I mean, you could be in another state and, and, and you walk into a graveyard, you'll find your last name etched on stone somewhere. There's one thing you will never find in no graveyard, and that's the stone, the, the headstone that reads G-O-D. Why? Because he's never died. Nobody in his family, his lineage, is to die. Amen. Somebody say he lives. And the Bible says that they crucified him. And they put him in that tomb for three days. That's significant. For three days, and the Bible says that he went to the lower parts of the world. But let me lose you right now. He went to the lower parts of the earth. Listen, before 
before the crucifixion and the ascension of, of Jesus, we didn't have grace. See, they didn't have a way. Matter of fact, if you remember when he was hanging on the cross between the two thieves and the one said, save me, he said, I will see you today in paradise. See, like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Daniel, all of them, those of the Old Testament, <clears throat> they, had no, they had no access to heaven at that time. Paradise. Paradise, a place that basically where the dead hung out until they were rescued. I love saying all the time that Jesus went to hell and kicked the door, the, the door of hell in and took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And he come back and he handed off a watch. There was a stop off on the way. On the way between earth and hell, there was a revival that went on when Jesus went to paradise and, and the Bible records that he took the captive captive. He went down and preached revival and people like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they surrendered and they got grace and they were now able to go to be with God in heaven. Greatest comeback story ever is that he didn't just get defeated at death but they put him in a tomb and once they put him in the tomb, the Bible says that they seen where he was laying. His grave clothes had been shed. And, and there laying on the stone was his napkin that was folded real neat. Don't have any damn cool that Jesus is neat. I don't know about you. I, I love the fact I serve a neat Jesus. He folded that napkin up real neat. Left it there. See, there was a Jewish tradition if you went to somebody's house and they and they fed you dinner and, and you sat at their table and let's just say you didn't enjoy the meal at all. It was, you know, not like mama's home cooking. You didn't know that chicken and rice wasn't like the way mama made it or, or that banana pudding show wasn't Aunt Bessie's. You know what I'm saying. That just wasn't good. You, you would throw, you would bring with your, your napkin up and you'd lay it down on the table and, and you'd say your goodbyes and leave. But if you really enjoyed that meal and really enjoyed that company, what you would do at that time, you would fold that napkin up and you lay it down on the table and the, the people that had you over would know that they enjoyed their time here and they said in folding that up, I'll be back. See, Jesus folded that up to let us know that there's coming a day in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And all you critics that don't believe in the rapture, you might as well go ahead and grab this because in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, he left all the evidence and the proof that we need that he's coming back. See, that's going to be the greatest comeback story ever is when he comes back for those that are looking for his coming. Some of you may be in a place of hopelessness right now, and you need to come back. If you're needing a comeback today, the comeback master is at your house right now, knocking on your door. He wants to know, are you going to open it? Are you going to let the stone be rolled back from your home, your heart, so that he can enter in and become the comeback? Listen, I don't care where you've been, what you've done, how far you've went. How far you feel like you've strayed away from God. Can I tell you something? You've not went too far that he cannot reach you. Right where you're sitting today. If you're needing to come back in your marriage, he's there for you today. If you're needing to come back in something, maybe you you got sin in your life and, and it's held you captive. Can I tell you something? He wants to lead you captive today. He wants to pull you up out of that and, 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 and have, a, have a comeback story that is amazing for you. It's surrender. It's a matter of saying, you know what? I know Jesus died for me. Pastor, I can't, I, I can't seem to get it together. I, I've worked hard as I know how to work and done everything that I know what to do. And there's some of you right now that have been serving God a long time and you've become lukewarm. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Read your Bible because the Bible says he'll spew you out of his mouth. He'd rather find your eyes cold than lukewarm. And maybe you're lukewarm today and you're needing to come back too. You're, you're in a place right now where like, you yeah, preach to them, Pastor. They need it. They need it. They need it. I'm talking to you today. You need to come back today. 
You need to come back to him. You need to let him ignite a fire in you that's unquenchable. See, sometimes everybody wants to run around and tell everybody what God said, what God said, what God said. Let me tell you something. God don't need a messenger today. What he needs is a message. And you are his message. You are his comeback message. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I've experienced close to death as I ever want to come. I have experienced, and I, I'm not even, a, I'm a totally ashamed of some of the places I've been in life. But can I tell you something? I'm a comeback story. I'm a comeback because of a comeback God. That he wants to be a comeback God in your life today. I'm telling you today that, that he will change everything in your life. If you will give him that opportunity to come in and do a work in your life, he wants to resurrect some of the dead things in your life. He is the resurrection. See, him being that he, when he says that, he says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. That doesn't describe what he is. That describes who he is. When you let him in, there's going to be some resurrection. Matter of fact, it's going to be a little uncomfortable for a minute. There's going to be some grave clothes that's got to go. You might have to hop to the door, but can I tell you something? If you will just allow him to do a resurrection breakthrough in your life, you can become, you can become that great comeback story. It don't matter who you are. It don't matter your story. It don't matter where you came from. It don't matter who your mama was, who your daddy was, who your brothers are, who anybody else is. Jesus wants to save and transform your life. But it's only going to happen if you're willing to say, you know what? Pray for me, Pastor. Because I'm going to pray for you right now. I want to pray for each and every one of you that, that maybe you need a comeback story in your life. Maybe you need a comeback from, from where you've been. Maybe some of you feel like you've been to hell and back. Can I tell you something? If you've been to hell and back, don't come by yourself. Bring somebody with you. We've all been through hell. We've been through hell and back. There's many of you. I know many of you. Right, right now, I see so many faces sitting out here. How you've come from hell to back. And you've become not a messenger, but a message that people can receive on a daily basis of the goodness that God has done. See, Jesus, he bored. It, the Bible says that they beat him unrecognizable. He became so, so ugly to even look at that he was rejected. Some of you feel like you've been rejected. Tell you something, the reason he was rejected is because, and they even said we would probably reject him because we wouldn't want to look at him. Why? Because that's the ugliness of our sin that was poured upon him to take our sins and become our sins for us so that we can have grace. So that we can, on this Easter Resurrection Sunday, that we can say, you know what, God, I surrender to you. I surrender right now. If that's you right now, Right where you're at. I just want you to bow your head. And I want you to pray this with me today from the depths of your heart. And let God make you a great comeback story. I, I love it. My siblings, even today, 25, almost ooh, quite a while since I've been saved. That, you know, they were skeptical for the first 10 years. First 15 years. First 20 years. But can I tell you something? They call me now. They know that I serve Jesus as my Lord and Savior. That this is not something I just made up in my head that I'm, I'm all that. No, I'm a comeback story. And I'm going to remain a comeback story. I'm going to let you, if Tiger Woods can get a little white ball and, and, and have a comeback story, I know if I grab a hold of the master, I get to go sit at his table and eat the feast at his table. There's coming a day. The Bible says in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye. I know we're in crazy right now with this COVID virus going on, but can I tell you something? Right now, take a minute, bow your head with me, open your heart, receive him as your Savior today. Receive him to set a fire down in you today and rekindle and re rejuvenate his presence and his spirit down in you. Right now, where you stand, right where you sit. Father, in the name of Jesus, say these words with me today. Say them out loud of your mouth so that you can get in your ear. Say, Father, I'm a sinner. I'm in need of a Savior. Tired of doing it my way, and I'm ready to do it your way. Save me. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Holy Spirit, I give you full reign 
in my life. Save me. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I loose the Holy Spirit into every home and every heart today for those that need that rekindling, that, that they feel like they've been to hell and back. That they feel like that there is no hope. That hope will fill their homes. And devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. You have no right and you have no authority. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you. I will see you soon.